Hello my friends and welcome to a new vlog. So today's video is going to be me giving authors a second chance. I picked out three authors that I read from all last year and my very first impressions of these authors were terrible. Um, one and two star experiences. Like any rational minded person, I decided to try these authors again to see if I could have a better experience with them. Because you know, sometimes first impressions aren't everything. So I'm gonna be reading three books from three different authors today. The first one and the, the most egregious first impression I had was with Darcy Coates. I read The Haunting of Rookward House back in October of last year and it was one star. This book was not only boring, not well written, and had incredibly flat characters, but it offended me. <laughs> it was offensive to me. So wh why? Am I reading another book by this author, you ask? Mostly, for this author in particular, it's it's FOMO. Like, I feel like so many people enjoy Darcy Coates and read a ton of her books and enjoy them, and I want to enjoy them too. So I thought maybe I just started with her worst book because looking at reviews, it seems like a lot of people who love Darcy Coates didn't really like this one either. So maybe I just started with the worst one. I just had a really bad experience. So I'm gonna try something new from the author. I'm going to be reading Where He Can't Find You. This is a YA horror and it's the author's newest release. I thought, let's give this one a try and see how it goes. So this is the book I'm gonna be reading from that author and hopefully having a better experience. Um, next, we have a romance author that I tried out for the first time again last year. I think I read it in December. Didn't have a good time with it. And that author is Taj McCoy. So I read this book by her, which was Zora Books Her Happily Ever After. I thought what could be more perfect and more cozy than a romance following a main character who owns and runs her own bookstore. It just sounded so cozy and bookish. There's a, I knew going in that there was gonna be like a love triangle situation. She's choosing between two different men. I thought, you know what, I can enjoy that. Let's get into it. And it disappointed me so incredibly much. I felt like the main character was so dumb. <laughs> I was expecting to go into this with the main character and myself having a really hard time choosing between these two different men. But one of the guys was so comically terrible, so bad. And she saw none of the red flags it just really, it ended up really pissing me off. I gave it two stars. I didn't absolutely hate it, but I very much disliked it. So I'm hoping again for a better experience with this book, which is again, the author's newest release. This is The Good Ones Are Taken. We do have another love triangle situation. So hopefully this one works out a little bit better, but we'll see. And then the very last author that I'm going to be giving a second chance in this video is K.S. Velioso. This seems to be an author that a lot of people love. There was a lot of buzz and excitement around the time that I picked up a book by this author. I read The Wolf of Orin Yara, which was the first book in the Chronicles of the Bitch Queen series. And with a title like that, I just expected it to be so much better than it was, but it ended up being a huge disappointment. But I will say, this is the author that I'm hoping to have the best experience with in this vlog, because while I didn't love the story and the way it went, and I didn't care for the main character, Character. I really appreciated the author's writing. I think her prose is brilliant, enjoyed her, overall her writing style. So I figured maybe I just started with a dud. And so I'm picking up Outlaw Mage by this author, which is another first in a series. I think it's gonna be a trilogy, I'm not sure. I know nothing about this. Haven't looked into anything about it. I just thought, oh, this is the author's newest, I believe, newest release. So let's try something completely different. It is set in the same world as Chronicles of the Bitch Queen, but in a different part of the world. Those are the three books that I'm going to be reading. Of course, I'm filming this intro after I've already read the books and know what the experiences turned out to be. So um, it, it was an interesting ride and experience, and it made me question uh, why I did this in the first place. But here you go. I will now send you back to past Laura as she experiences these books for the first time. Hope you enjoy. Hi, I'm exhausted, so I'm in bed, but I am almost halfway through 
where he can't find you and I know a little bit more of what it's about so I thought I'd talk to you about it and give you my initial thoughts. So we're following Abby. It's this small little town where weird things seem to happen called Doubtful. That's the name of the town. <laughs> and it's weird because, okay, so there's a serial killer, right, named The Stitcher who takes people, takes pieces of them and sews them together in very wrong ways um, with red string, red thread. So the town has been plagued by the serial killer for years, right? The town follows these rules, everyone, no one stays out after dark, no one goes out alone, it's a whole thing. People are constantly going missing and they haven't been able to find this stitcher, this st serial killer. But the kids in here, Abby and her friends, believe that they know who it is, that it's this particular man, and now um, Abby's sister, Hope, has gone missing. She's determined to get her sister back. It's interesting because apparently the Stitcher is just a man, but things seem to go wonky with technology whenever he's about to strike. So <laughs> you know he's about to strike because cars fail, electricity fails, phones, TV, even down to manual clocks. So like, it seems like there's something supernatural going on, but it's only being blamed on a man, a regular man. I'm trying, I'm really trying, you guys, to just like suspend my disbelief, to just go with the story. It's fiction, it doesn't have to completely make sense, but at the same time, it needs to make sense. <laughs> Okay, because how is it that no one's done anything? How is it that this has been going on for so long? People are going missing, what, weekly? Monthly? And the FBI haven't been called in? Like, who is... Who, what is happening? <laughs> like, the, the cops of the town can't figure out who's doing this. Something needs to happen. I, I'm just... I'm like, how is this allowed to go on, whereas everyone's just accepting the way it is. Oh yeah, people go missing. Yeah, people show up dead and stitch together weirdly. What? <laughs> so anyway, it's at least keeping my interest. I'm not hating it. I don't feel like DNFing. I am curious, because I really want to know what's going on. And if it's this man, because this particular man is, I forget his name. What is his name? His name is Vickers. Um, Apparently, he is so, like, obvious about, like, everyone in the town is afraid, is afraid of him. Everyone knows, or at least think they know, that he's the guy behind all of these killings. But the cops have never been able to find anything on him. But the thing is, it's almost too much that he's the culprit. Like, they broke into his house. <laughs> and he had framed missing photos on his wall. Like the kids that have gone missing, he's framed their missing posters and put them on his wall. He literally orders a box of red yarn, like the killer uses, every few months. I don't know what the story is doing, I don't know where it's gonna go, but I am interested in finding out. The characters, their motivations are making sense and their actions are making sense and how they react to certain situations absolutely makes sense. What doesn't make sense is law enforcement and the grown-ups in in this town because what the fuck are they doing? Like it's um, ridiculous. Talk about incompetence. That's That's what it is and like I'm sure if, if they were competent, we wouldn't have a story. So it is what it is. I'm going to continue reading. I'm pretty much flying through it because I haven't even really had a lot of time to sit and read today. Um, it's going to be a quick read. I'll probably finish it this evening. And what's really cool, we have these illustrations here. Um, like a little comic strip. There's one, and then the other one here. The art is really pretty, um, like that. Also really creepy. So yeah, I think that's, you know, a cool little added addition to the reading experience. So enjoying that as well. But um, right now, as it stands, it's like a three star. It's fine, but I'm interested to see where it goes and really the ending will determine 
what I end up, how I end up feeling about it, I guess. So I will come back to you once I have finished this and give you my final thoughts. So I finished Find, uh, Where He Can't Find You. <laughs> I don't know what I was gonna say, um, by Darcy Coates. It flew by, like it's definitely a very quick read, so I'll give it that. And you know what? I didn't hate it. <laughs> you know it's gonna be interesting when you start out by saying, well, I didn't hate it. It was entertaining to a point, and it was definitely compelling to read. It kept me turning pages. I read this in like half a day because the intrigue was definitely high. I wanted to know what was going on. I had these burning questions, especially, so why are all these supernatural things happening? So got my answers, um, and overall, it was, fine it was good um i ended up giving it three stars there are some things though that definitely took away from the reading experience which i will explain and the first and biggest issue being the fact that every single adult in the story is completely incompetent <laughs> from parents to leaders of the town to law enforcement law enforcement especially the cops in this town completely useless to the point where i was theorizing in my head that the cops had to be involved in what was going on somehow with all of the things happening in town like they have developed all of these rules you can't go out after dark never be alone um the town has is changed their way of living to accommodate for this serial killer as if it's just something that has to happen and no one is ever going to do anything about it and it took a group of teenagers to finally stand up and do something about it and i get that that definitely used to be quite a big theme in ya stories it's something that we've complained about as readers for for years about the incompetency or the uninvolvement of the adults in the story and i feel like that's something that ya has corrected over the years unfortunately this one did not i know that there's definitely some suspension of disbelief that has to take place in order to enjoy this story but it was just hard for me to suspend my disbelief because how could every single person be so incompetent <laughs> like how okay so that was the first thing that kind of kept pulling me out of the story and being like this is not making sense uh, the second thing is the fact that there were a, a few issues in here that we could have dove deeper in that we could have talked about I'm not saying that every single book we read needs to talk about something, needs to have heavy themes, needs to talk about social issues, but when it's blatantly there in your face, when there's multiple things that we could have worked through and talked about and then author chose just not to do that, it kind of made me feel weird. So there was that. Do with that what you will. The third thing was the plot holes. <laughs> Things that just didn't make sense, no matter how much I tried to suspend my disbelief. You're telling me that someone is trapped for two days, had a limb cut off and didn't bleed out and is just fine and fighting that. Like, there's little things like that that just didn't make sense within the story. Another thing is that this is definitely plot driven and I am a character driven reader. So that is definitely personal preference, right? I prefer to connect to the characters. This didn't want you to do that. This was very much plot focused. It's really about the horror of it all. I don't know if I said that this was YA, a YA thriller in like a previous update. It's not, it's definitely horror. There definitely wasn't any like twists or turns or anything unexpected, anything like that. But it's one thing to be a plot focus story but at the same time I still expect a plot driven story to have developed characters and this did not the characters were so one-dimensional I couldn't tell you a single like I can't even remember anyone's names I think the main character Abby the main character was Abby her sister was named Hope I don't remember the guy's name um but I couldn't tell you anything about these characters, about their personalities, about 
what they care about. Very flat characters. So because of that, there wasn't much for me personally to be invested in to latch on to. I'm giving it three stars because ultimately I think it was somewhat entertaining and it was an intriguing and compelling read. Like I wanted to know what was happening. I wanted to get to the end to get all of the answers basically. But comparing it to the first book that I read by this author, The Haunting of Rookward House, this was definitely an improvement <laughs> over that. I mentioned I gave that one one star. It was so bland and unpersonal. This had a little bit more style that this was definitely a step up. So was this a success? Did giving this author a second chance, was it worth it? basically. And I think the answer to that is yes. Um, while this isn't a favorite book, <laughs> it's nowhere close to a favorite book and it's not something that I would necessarily recommend, I still didn't hate it, but I also didn't love it. It just ended up being fine. Second question is, would I read from this author again? And the answer to that is, well, it depends. Like, I don't think I'm gonna go out, like, buy another book by this author. I don't think I'm going to seek out another book by this author, but if there is a book by this author that starts making the rounds on booktube, that people start talking about, that has a synopsis that is very intriguing or buzzwordy for me, then yeah, I might pick up another book from this author. But as of right now, I'm probably not going to seek out more works by Darcy Coates, unfortunately. But I mean, technically, this was a success because it got a higher rating than the first book. But now I know that maybe this author isn't one to seek out for me personally. So that is the first book down. I am now going to move on to the second book of this vlog, which is Outlaw Mage. <laughs> So I started reading this last night and I got five chapters in, I think. I'm reading it on my Kindle, which I recently just got and I'm obsessed with it. But I think I have an idea of what this is about. Like I did not read the synopsis at all before getting into this. I didn't look into it, nothing at all. But I realized when I started reading it that it says it's a gothic murder mystery adventure. So I don't know when that's gonna come into play because it hasn't come into play yet. But like I said, five chapters in and here's what I know. We're following Rosha and she is a young woman who made it into the most prestigious mage academy in this country. However, she is of a particular race of people who this country colonized and so because of that she hasn't really fit in at this school and she is relentlessly bullied by not only her fellow students but also by instructors at the school and she's dealt with this for years and years i think she's been at this academy for like 10 years it's been a long time um and she is about to sit her final exams to finally graduate and one of her classmates pulls this horrible prank on her during her exam. Things go horribly wrong and her instructor starts yelling at her and even starts saying things like, we allowed you, someone like you, to learn amongst people like us. And after that, she's like, you know what? Fuck this, fuck you, I'm, I'm out. I'm out and she just walks out of the school as well. And I'm like, girl i get it like i get it but seriously you were d you were almost out you were almost out <laughs> so she doesn't complete her final exams she walks out of the school and she's like i'm done with this but she is being chased down uh by mages from the school because the in this world in this kingdom magic is of course regulated and controlled and she is not allowed to have the knowledge she has without graduating from the school. So they are trying to find her, call her back. If you're not registered with the magic people, then you're not allowed to use magic and you're basically an outlaw. She is, she goes on the run, gets as far away as she can, and ends up in this tiny, weird little village on the furthest edge of the kingdom where they are in desperate need of mages, but like the council, the, the people in charge don't want to send mages to this little town because it's so horrible. And like mages don't want to go there because it's not a good post, whatever. 
she ends up going there they're like we desperately need you could you stay here and help us and she decides to stay that's as far as i've gotten so far it feel like the beginning of this book felt like it was going to be this epic fantasy story but now that we're in this little village where magic is going haywire basically they're very close to some kind of ripple in magic i guess and they give her like this her own little cottage on the edge of the village and it just feels very cozy so i'm getting a completely different vibe than what i thought this was gonna be so i don't know if this is gonna be like a cozy fantasy or if it's gonna be something else so i'm actually excited i'm actually really enjoying it i like our main character rosha she is very grumpy <laughs> she's very grumpy she doesn't want to be around people this little village in the middle of nowhere suits her just fine she met up with this adorable little dog and they're now best friends like it just seems so cute and cozy so i don't know if the story is going to continue on that tone but i'm here for it i'm enjoying it so far so far a lot better than i did the first book that i read by this author but anyway i think i'm going to update you again when i'm about like halfway through so we can see how i'm feeling at that point but so far so good i am now 81 percent of the way through outlaw mage and let me tell you it has been uh quite a few days since we last spoke it's been like six days um and i have been reading this every single day it's just taking me forever to get through not because it's long like i'm i'm 400 pages in i don't know how long is it how long it is like 500 and something pages it's not terribly long i just can't seem to get through this book <laughs> No matter how hard I try. So I was going to update you when I was 50% of the way through, but I really didn't have much to say. So I finally read the synopsis because I was like, what is even happening here? Um, I finally read the synopsis and turns out the synopsis gives away something that happens more than halfway through the book, even went into something that I didn't get to yet at 50% of the way through the book. And I, like, first of all, if I had read the synopsis before I started reading this, I would have been pissed. Second of all, this is why I don't read synopses. Um, but also, if that's the main plot of this story, it doesn't get started until 50% of the way through the book. So forget everything I said in the last clip about this possibly being cozy, it's not cozy. She spends some time at that little town that I talked about where she becomes the mage, or the witch in residence and she's there for three years before her stepfather comes and finds her and tells her your father has gone missing and we need you to come help us find him and so reluctantly she goes back to help the family to find her father and finds herself in this ridiculous situation um uncovers like this conspiracy regarding the empire and that's kind of where we are now what i'm not enjoying is the fact that our main character rosha seems to not have any agency within the plot like she hasn't made a single decision except for the really stupid decision that she made at the beginning of the book by walking out of mage school during her final exams because since then it feels like the plot has just taken her to and fro. She is not doing anything. She's just allowing things to happen to her. Like she spends time in this little town she ends up in and they need her. So she's like, okay, I'll stay here. But then once her stepdad comes and is like, no, the family really needs your help. She's like, okay, fine, I'll go do that. And then she just finds herself in these progressive situations where it's just like someone uh, assumes she's someone else. So she pretends to be that person. She is looking for her father, but also someone else. I don't want to say too much because I feel like the synopsis gives too much away. But anyway, she's looking for someone and she's like snooping around this place. And she's like, I don't know what to do. I've looked and now I don't know what to do. And then next thing you know, someone comes up and it's the person that she was looking for. It's it's a lot of things like that where she like has no agency. She's just kind of thrown around from place to place and people to people and plot to plot. And it's that's kind of annoying for me. It's quite a bit annoying for me. 
Also, I don't know that I love Rosha as a main character. And it's not just her. There are two kids in here. They're children, okay? Like a six-year-old, a little child, and a nine-year-old. The way that everyone just disregards these children, like putting them in dangerous situations, there was, a, like, there are, for reasons, assassins or someone after this family. And while they know that this is going on, they send the two boys out to play by themselves at night, basically, because they're having dinner. I'm assuming it's evening. And they're just like, yeah, just go out and play while the adults talk. And like, if people are after your family, you don't leave your six-year-old child unattended. And there's so many instances like that where like total disregard for the lives of these children. The way the plot is so completely meandering and I was 50% of the way through the book and still didn't know what the plot was of this book. I didn't know where we were going. I didn't know what we were doing. I'm now 80% of the way through and I feel like the story is just now getting started and everything that happened before it, while being interesting, didn't add to the plot progression. It's a bit meandering. It's a bit all over the place. The situations that this main character finds her in, herself in are just getting more and more ridiculous as time goes on. The prose is good, don't get me wrong. Her prose is good. I've even highlighted several quotes that I thought were good. But like, <laughs> the, the way she writes in this, like, oh my god, I don't know how to explain it. It's like we get these flashbacks and then she'll she'll go off into a tangent and it just I don't like the writing. I don't think it flows. That's basically what I'm trying to say. I don't think the writing flows even though the prose is good. There are definitely things I'm liking. I like the overall magic in here. I like the world. This does take place in the same world as the Wolf of Orniaro. So that was interesting to to know. It's just it's in a different part of the world. I, I don't have much to hold on to. There's times where it's funny and I don't think it's supposed to be funny. It's funny to me because it's like, this is so stupid. <laughs> like just the situation. And there's there's times where it is actually funny. Um, so far, it's keeping me entertained. I'm not hating it despite how I've talked about it just now. Like there's a lot of things I'm not liking about it, but I'm not hating it. It's entertaining so far even though it's really not following the structure and plot beats of a typical story. Um, so that's been a little bit frustrating for me. But now that I'm 80% of the way through, I'm on page 401. My Kindle tells me I have an hour and 53 minutes left of reading time. So I'm definitely going to finish it today. <laughs> I, I have to finish it today because this has gone on way longer than I had planned. It's just not quite holding my attention the way I maybe would have wanted it to. I will come back probably this evening to give you my final thoughts on it. I finally finished Outlaw Mage by K.S. Filioso and I have to say it was fine. Good even. My hands are really ashy. <laughs> I couldn't deal with it. Um, it was good even like it was entertaining it kept me engaged i didn't love it but i definitely didn't dislike or hate it despite all of the issues that i talked about in previous updates i think a lot of people could enjoy this one thing i didn't mention in previous updates is that i do believe that this is either self or independently published and the it, it definitely needed some editing not only were there grammatical errors but their, the sentence structure in some places could have done with some reworking. So I like, I don't, I'm not gonna dock a star or lower my rating because of a book needing to be edited because of grammatical errors. If it's a trad published author, I'm going to expect it to be better, right? Because traditional publishing puts you through many, multiple rounds of edits. And so all of those things should be taken care of. But when you're self or independently published, that's not always an option. Obviously, I'm going to give it grace for that. But there were a lot of times where it pulled me out of the story simply because of the sentence structure and how things could have been done better. And like, I just thought I'd mention it in case you wanted to pick this up because I know that might bother some people. And it did bother me at times. Besides that, though, 
the real issue, despite everything else I've said before, the main issue here is, or I should say including everything I said before, the main issue is that this is a setup book. This book is setting up the series. This almost feels like it's a kind of a prequel to the series. Like this is how we got to this point and now this is what the series is going to be about. Which made it feel like the plot of this first book didn't get started until we were 60% of the way through the book. Which is not something I like. I don't think that this is a first book in a series that can stand on its own. Um, and I like my books in series to stand on their own. I like us to have accomplished something in first books in series and it didn't feel like this one did. It was meandering, the plot was all over the place because we didn't really know the full plot until we get to the end of the book. So that was really my main issue. That is not something I like and I feel like that's almost something that I remember from reading the first book I read from this author which was The Wolf of Orin Yarrow is that I don't, I can't get a clear picture of where this is going and not in a way like wow this is so wild I don't know where it's going but in a way where it's like is there a point to any of this? So that was a little frustrating and that is probably the main reason why this is getting three stars and not anything higher. I would recommend this. I think this could go on to be a very interesting series. I'm not interested in continuing however but as far as the purposes of this video this was a success. I gave her first book two stars and I gave this one three stars. We went up in ratings, we went up in enjoyment. Will I read from this author again? Um, I don't know that I will. I don't think I'm gonna gravitate towards Chaos Filioso. If, again, like I said about Darcy Coates, if there's a book that comes out by this author that everyone's raving about and it sounds good to me, yes, I will pick it up, I will try it because I am good with the author's prose and overall writing style, but part of her writing style is the fact that her first books in the series are a bit meandering and all over the place as far as plot is concerned and are kind of set up books for the rest of the series. I would be interested to read a standalone by this author. I don't know if she's done any standalones. I'm not gonna look into it. I'm not terribly interested in reading from this author again. Was it worth giving this author a second chance? I think so. I think so because I don't feel like reading this was a waste of time. I don't feel like I wasted my time. I feel like I got enjoyment out of it. Like I said it was entertaining and it was engaging but yeah don't necessarily think I'm gonna seek out more books from this author. So far we're two for two in that I had a better experience this time around with the author than I did the first time around and we're also two for two with maybe this isn't quite the right author for me though. Does that make sense? None of these were disappointments and none of these can be disappointments because I'm not expecting much from them, which is good. I'm going in with the expectation that I'm probably not going to enjoy this because I didn't enjoy the author's first book, which maybe is helping the case with a lot of these books, right? My expectations are low, so my experience, my enjoyment is a little bit higher. Anyway, that is the second book down. It took me a ridiculous amount of time to get through this book but I got through it and maybe that says a little bit about it as well, how long it took me to read. The next book we're moving on to is The Good Ones Are Taken by Taj McCoy. We've got like a friends to lover romance, I guess, and a bit of a love triangle. So I'm excited, I'm going, well, I'm, I'm here. I'm <laughs> somewhat excited. I have been craving romance because I don't think I've picked up a romance for a while now, a couple weeks. So I am excited to dive into some more romance. Hopefully it won't be as terrible as the first book I read by the author. Um, but you know, I will read, I don't know, maybe I'll get like halfway through and then give you my thoughts because it's a romance. Like, I don't know what I'll be able to say with as far as first impressions for only a few pages in. So I'm gonna read about half of this. I'll come back and update you, let you know how it's going. I will see you in a couple hours. It's a few hours later and I finished the book. I meant to update you while I was halfway through but I didn't have a lot to say so I just finished it and 
now we can talk about it. So this is a friends to lovers romance in which we follow Maggie, our heroine, who has recently broken up with a man that she thought was gonna be the one. Turns out he was cheating on her. Two of her best friends are actually getting married in, I think it's like in nine months, and they want her to get back out there and try dating. They set up an online dating profile for her and encourage her to find a date to bring to their weddings. Meanwhile, she has this best friend named Garrett. They have been best friends since college and he has been hopelessly in love with her that entire time, unbeknownst to her. She goes on a series of like really horrible dates <laughs> with these online dudes um, until she ends up meeting Blake, was that his name? Who's a doctor, amazingly attractive, perfect on paper. Um, and starts up a little relationship with him until Garrett finally admits his feelings for her and she has to choose between the both of them. So this is very similar in tropes and style to the first book I read by this author, which was Zora Books Her Happily Ever After. It was a love triangle situation in that one as well. This one is different because we know going in right away that like she's gonna go with Garrett it's a friends, it's marketed as friends to lovers. We know where the story's gonna end up, which made it so that I ended up enjoying it better than I did the first book. <laughs> but I feel like we're right back in the same situation. I feel like a lot of the issues that I had with the first book I read by this author, I had with this book. I did not like our main character, Maggie. I didn't like her. She was very selfish and self-centered. The way she waffles over these two men for so long is ridiculous to me. The romance itself, I feel like it was good, but my love of the romance was tainted by the fact that I really didn't like this main character and I feel like Garrett deserved so much better because she was so dumb. Like she meets this guy, Blake, or whatever the fuck his name is, and strike up this relationship, like I said, he wines and dines her. They know each other for all of like a month. And then she is put in a position where she has to choose between this guy that she's known for a month and is feeling lukewarm towards and Garrett, her, the, her best friend, her ride or die, the man who has been there for her for 20 years. <laughs> and like the amount of time, she was waffling over the decision between these two men for weeks. And I'm just like, girl, what the, f what are you doing? What are you doing? So I thought that Garrett deserved way better. That man is an absolute saint. He is perfect. He is kind. He is considerate. He is communicative. He spoils her. He's always thinking of her. The way he loves her, like you could feel that on page. But again, he, ju he just deserved better. And I think it really was her and her not knowing her own feelings and not knowing her own mind that really, like, admittedly, can that happen? I'm sure it can, but it just doesn't makes sense to me and the funny thing is that i am not a fan of friends to lovers as a trope but the relationship that they had in here the bond that they had that they built over 20 years together was beautiful it seemed so natural their progression into romance for her not to see that was just baffling to me it really really was also this is a very small note but I, why are we calling books rom-coms when they're not funny? Laugh out loud friends to lovers rom-com. It's not a laugh out loud. It's not funny. I feel like rom-com is a term that gets thrown around so much. And I understand that humor is subjective, but this wasn't even trying, honestly. I will say that I really loved the friendship group in here. Maggie and her friends are almost like friendship goals. Like I, I loved them together. I loved their dynamic together. That was a huge part of the book. And that was a huge part that added into my overall enjoyment of the story. And like I said, Garrett, perfect book boyfriend. Like, I love him. So this is three stars. This was good, but not great. And now that I've read two books by this author and had some of the same issues with both books, will I be reading from this author again? N no, probably not. My experience was better than the first time with the author. So there is that. A three star, which is what we've given every single book in this vlog. So what have we learned after this experiment? Um, I guess we learned that um, first impressions are very important. 
and also really set the tone for your relationship going forward. My first impressions of all of these authors were not very good. And while by reading another book by each of these authors, I did get to a better place with them, um, it still left me wanting more in all three cases. I think we can safely say at the end of this that I do not intend <laughs> on picking up more books from these authors. I'm glad I did this. I'm glad I gave these authors a second chance because now when a new book comes out, by these authors that sounds appealing, I'm not gonna rush to go out and get them. Do you know what I mean? I'm not gonna rush to read them. I think I have successfully made up my mind as to whether or not these authors are for me. And I think the answer is that they're just not for me. <laughs> and the author that made the, the biggest leap uh, was Darcy Coates because the first book I read by her was a one star that I absolutely hated and this was three stars. So this is the author that showed the most improvement. So that is the end of this video. That was my second chance author vlog. I didn't hate my experience, but I didn't love it either. Will I do something similar to this again? Pro probably not. <laughs> I hope you had fun watching. That's gonna be it for me today. If you enjoyed this vlog, let me know in the comments. If you wanna leave me an emoji to let me know you were here, um, leave me, leave me some heart emojis in the comments and I will see you in my next video. Bye.